Good morning. Welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Pat Lawson Muse. For the past four years, NBC4 has been awarding grants to local nonprofits that work on bold new ideas to move our communities forward. The 21st Century Solutions grants are given in four categories media, arts and technology, civic engagement, jobs and economic empowerment, and education and environment. The grants total $100,000 and they go to three nonprofits. This morning, we'd like to introduce you to the top winner this year. Free Minds Book Club and Writing Workshop steers young inmates, most of them teenage boys, onto positive paths, giving them an alternative to the actions and decisions that have led to their incarceration. Our guests this morning are Doug Chambers, an apprentice in the program who brings his own personal experience to the workshop. Tara Liebert is co-founder and executive director of Free Minds, and Marcus Bullock, is a business owner and a re-entry apprentice trainer. Thank you all for being with us this morning. Thank you for having us. Well, uh, Ms. Liebert, first off, congratulations on the grant. We are thrilled. This grant just allows us to go to a whole nother level in our re-entry um, workplace development efforts. Yeah, pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, $50,000. Your group uses the power of the pen, we'll say, to inspire and redirect young lives. And you've redirected a lot, haven't you? Almost a thousand uh, in 13 years. Uh, we've been working with youth charged as adults and we always say it's amazing these very simple tools that we start with the writing and the reading lead to all of this amazing reentry success mm -hmm. and tell us how the workshop works so it's uh, pretty cool every week at the DC jail um, a very magical thing happens young boys that most have never finished a book cover to cover or written a poem uh, do both and they gather in a room and they share um, stories about their own lives after reading about uh, characters in books that are very similar to them that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, we say it's the chance to take off the hard mask that you have to wear on the streets and really share what's going on and form a bond. And then you mm -hmm. write about your own life and then the third part is that you connect with the community. So we publish their poems where so everyone can read about them. So they, they are writing, reading and writing while they're incarcerated and then when they get out? Yes, so right. it's a whole continuum, mm -hmm. and it's a really way of self-discovery, introspection, helps them communicate with other people in their lives, and we've just found that it um, has just grown to so many different ways they can use that power of writing. Marcus, you are uh, 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 an apprentice trainer now, but you used to be in the program. What led you to the program? The it, it was an amazing, amazing program. I mean, when you learn about Free Minds, uh, in, 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 in the community and then remember uh, how tough it was to be able to come from prison and jumping over all of those hurdles uh, is just hard not to attach yourself to a program that really believes in, in the guys uh, the way they do. So did you like reading and writing before you got into the workshop? Mm -hmm. So you know you, you, you read right I love reading um, one of the main benefits only probably one of the only benefits inside of being in, in a prison cell is that you have a ton of time to read books um, so reading is was an awesome part of Marcus it became a part of Marcus but then when you're introduced to poetry and how your writings can not only be you know express what you're thinking and what you're going through mm -hmm. um, but can also give a insight to your life it's it was awesome so your journey is, is, is taking you from uh, well taking you a long way now you're a business owner you, you own uh, a business school you've developed an <laughs> app uh, how'd you wind up doing all of that that's a hard question that's the million dollar question how how did my path in here uh, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart you know, from selling mm. candy in school, ah. uh, and then now to have the opportunity uh, to be able to to give jobs to people has been has been a great adventure. Uh, the journey has been a long one, a tough one, uh, but but one I'm very very proud of. All right, well, we'll talk a little more about your business, which is painting, in a moment. But uh, Doug, you are uh, you you you're the product of uh, of his his training and his experience. You've worked with him. You're an apprentice in the program now. So tell us your story. Well, it started in 2008. I made a mistake that caused me a stench in my life. Seven years of it. And, like, during that time, well, I say it started on a juvenile block. I was in a cell sitting there because I got in trouble for doing something I had no business doing. And dudes was like, the book club here, book club here. <laughs> so I was like, man, wonder what this is about. So along came two people. One of them was Tara and another one was Tara. 
I'm like, ooh, I said that yeah, wrong. Yeah. And it was Tara and Kelly. I'm sorry. And mm -hmm. I asked her for a book. She was like, if you read it, would you mind writing something about what you read? And I was like, well, I was like, all right, I'll try that. And since then, it never stopped. And <laughs> I found something I love, which is reading. And I always liked it writing because I guess back then I wasn't too good with saying what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes I'd rant and rave and beat around the bush instead of getting to the point where every, every time I tried writing, I was always able to say what I wanted to say. So I stuck with them, and they never gave up on me throughout my whole journey. They was there for me, and now that I'm back in society, they still here with me. And, and writing became a, a way for you, really, to express yourself. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was my release. Uh, uh, yeah. Ms. Liebert, uh, Tara, Marcus uh, and uh, Doug have worked with the reentry program, uh, and that program is going to be using the grant that, that you've gotten. Mm -hmm. So tell us about reentry. So it really grew organically. So we had these, uh, when we first started at Kelly, a co-founder and I, we thought it's just books and writing, a way to, you know, do some inner work and change your view on life. And then our first member came home and said, hello, I'm excited about education. I want to change my life. I want to work. What's, what do you have for me now? So that's when we started our reentry. And it wasn't until Marcus um, uh, came along and is really living proof model that it can be done. You can come home from incarceration and completely transform your lives. So that's why he is, we call it a credible messenger. He is the trainer to the young men like Doug. And the reentry is really where it all happens. Like you can say when you're incarcerated, I'm going to to change my life but until you're actually on the ground home changing your life and realize those temptations and the pressure these boys are on are incredible and that's why we say Marcus is a living proof that it can be done and he's there coaching them all the way through okay we've got to take a break but we're going to continue our discussion in just a moment we're talking about the free minds book club and writing workshop we'll continue our discussion right after this Welcome back. We're talking with Free Minds Book Club and Writing Workshop, the number one winner of NBC4's 21st Century Solutions grants this year, uh, doing some wonderful things with, with teenage boys. And uh, Marcus Bullock, you, your company is Perspective's Premier Contractors. Your specialty is painting. What I want to hear from you is how you got there. Very interesting story. Uh, when I was released from prison, I in searching Why for were you in prison? Uh, so I was arrested for carjacking, attempted robbery, and use of a firearm and commission of a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 15 years old, about a week after my 15th birthday. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he and I ended up carjacking a man in the, in the middle of December, uh, right before Christmas. Uh, we were sentenced both to 23 years to life. Um, my judge suspended 15 of those years um, on my sentence, and I ended up having to serve eight years in prison, mm -hmm. in an adult prison at 15 years old. So while you were in there, were you reading and writing? That became you know, the latter part of me, you mm -hmm. know, being in prison. Uh, the first part, you know, being a kid in prison, growing up in prison, sure. is, is, is a little, little, little challenging, to say the least. Sure. Uh, you know, it, a, a set of challenges, a different set of set challenges. Um, Typical, not, not typical for an adolescent. Uh, but uh, growing up through there, you have to figure out a way to escape. You have to figure out the ways, the means to exposing yourself to something different than the bars you see every day. Um, and books was my, books became my outlet. So you, you became a painter and you started a business. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, interesting story. Um, I never actually became a painter. Uh, what happened was I was working at a paint store after after I was released, uh, mixing paint. I'm the guy who you come in, you want a nice color blue to paint your kitchen. I was the guy you would talk to to get so that So you color mixed blue. it. You didn't I, apply it. I didn't apply it. <laughs> okay. I just mixed the paint. Uh, and then I would I would meet people. Um, you would come into the store and say, hey, Marcus, well, how much does it cost to paint my kitchen? I'm like, oh, we don't really paint your kitchen, we sell the paint so that you can paint your kitchen. Uh, and then I would meet the guys, the, the, the painters, the contractors who would come in and say, oh my goodness, there's no work out here. Um, I became the conduit between you and the painter. Um, and since then, we grew our painting company, um, now 11 years running now, uh, to a full-fledged construction That's firm. That's where the entrepreneur in you came out <laughs> and excelled. Yes, ma'am. All right, yes. so, so, uh, so tell me, Doug, uh, uh, what you're doing uh, at Perspective now. You, you've got a job. Yeah, I'm a contractor. We do janitorial and we do contracting, residential and private. And Well, really, I'm a helping hand because I haven't went to school to get certified and all the things, but 
every day is a learning experience. Every day I learn something new. Mm -hmm. Every day I look forward to learning something new, and I'm just appreciative of the chance I was given, and I'm not going to let them down. Are you working toward certification? Yeah, soon when I want to go to school, it's been kind of in the talks, but lately it's been a lot of work on the table, so I was waiting to things even out, and we get a little free time, and I'm going to try to go to school. And, and so being in the workshop actually led you to working with Marcus? Yes. Because while you're there, I guess it's two days out of the week, you're offered a chance to get some on-the-job experience, and I took advantage of that chance, and mm -hmm. they liked me, said I work hard. Ms. Liebert, uh Marcus and, uh, and his business um, is representative of what you're doing with business owners and how they're helping to rehabilitate and change these young men's lives. Yeah, it has to be real on the job. As uh, Doug said, three days a week, it's classroom instruction that Marcus and our other trainers do on all kinds of job readiness skills. And then the two days, you're on the job, so you get real-time feedback from the work site supervisor saying, look, this is, you know, what, you, what you're great at, and this is where you need to improve. And um, studies show that works the best with young adults that's how they learn it's like immediate feedback here you go and we'll help you with it we're not gonna just say oh you can't do the job you're cut out no we're gonna guide you and mentor you and that's where Marcus and his partner Tony and Bill they're just amazing they love these guys they care about them they want to see them succeed they were there before them they're now giving back and now Doug does that for our new guys coming up behind him he's gonna share with them how it works so it's this brotherhood that's super critical call to making it. So Marcus's company is a painting contractor. What are some of the other uh, uh, specialties uh, that the business is? So construction is a big one because as Doug, said, uh, as Doug said, when our guys are incarcerated, they're so young, they haven't had a job before because their youth charges adults. So things where it's entry level, landscaping, cleaning, construction, but then we encourage them and help with our help to get those advanced certifications and move up. So we have um, electricians, we have auto Auto mechanics um, we have got guys going to college like we have a really nice group of senior members that are in the workforce all right we've got to take a break we'll continue talking about free minds book club and writing workshop right after this stay with us welcome back this morning uh, we're talking about free minds uh, book club and writing workshop and 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 miss Le uh, liebert and and marcus th this is really a sort of a training ground would you say for for a life you're training young men uh and you're teaching them to become contractors you're you're helping them uh, learn job skills but the reason they stick with you is because they can relate to you yeah, I mean, we want to be able to help catapult these guys to the next level. Um, we want to, you know, we act as the springboard, uh, per se. Uh, and, and we know that it's very challenging for these guys, right? It's, it was challenging for me to be able to come home to find a job. And, and not just to find a job, but to find a job as a young, as a black man with a felony on his record and not having any job experience. Right? These are major obstacles for a lot of our, a lot of our guys. And, and we want to be able to continue to be that catapult for them to be able to become the, the new Dugs. Mm -hmm. uh, is he sort of like a big brother for you, Doug? Yeah, anytime I know I could call Marcus for advice on anything pertaining to anything, it's like there's no limitations to what I could call this guy and ask him mm -hmm. for. I'm appreciative to that. About work, about your personal life, about your family? Yeah, anything. anything. And how important is that? That's real important. Has it been for you? No, uh, it's real important. Like, I, haven't had, I haven't needed no help lately because I've been happy. I've been happy. It's just like, I don't think nothing can make me or deter me from my path that I'm on. Because I mean, Doug is very modest. I'm sorry, I didn't have good. He is extremely <laughs> modest. modest. Extreme. Doug is one of our, I mean, he already, he's been working for our company for a few months now. And he's one of our premier employees. And that's the one thing that most of the other, most other small business, they don't have an opportunity to be able to engage with those like Doug, right? I mean, he has the most to lose coming from out of a prison cell coming off of probation, coming out of a halfway house. He has a lot to lose, and so he works like it. And what happens is it allows us to be able to build an infrastructure in our organization that everyone else in the company piggybacks off of. Mm -hmm. It's been an, a phenomenal experience. Ms. Liebert, uh, recidivism is a big problem. Uh, it's one of the major problems. Uh, D.C. Police, Kath, uh, Police Chief Kath, uh, Kathy Lanier has talked about it being responsible for a lot of what we see happening in um, cities on city streets and in city neighborhoods now so so stemming recidivism stopping that that uh, that 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 trend is so important and 
your program is doing that in a way that others don't. Right, and what we say, with the right support, it's possible, but that right support has to be people like Marcus and Tony, and also for our members to realize that they're in, they have a wraparound group that can be there at every challenge along the way. I mean, these, when so many young men come home to nothing, right, the ties are severed from their families. Mm -hmm. As Marcus said, employers don't want to take a chance on them. There's stereotypes, there's perceptions that if they won't be enthusiastic enthusiastic employees and what we're saying is no like I'm here to say a positive message that it can work and they're going to be your best employees and uh, normally the recidivism rate for our group youth charged adult it's anywhere between 70 and 90 percent reoffend and return right back to prison to the hopelessness and the despair we are at thanks to our reentry program at NBC we're at 10 percent reoffend or have a probation violation that's incredible statistics and we know the formula for it now it's like practical skills long-term support consistency and real opportunities okay we've got to take another break but we'll continue our talk about free minds in just a minute Welcome back. Free Minds Book Club and Writing Workshop actually has a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a book uh, of uh, poems and stories and profiles of, uh, of mentors and graduates uh, and apprentices like yourself. And you've got some work in here. On page eight, you wrote a, a poem. I want you to read some of it, Doug. All right, well, the name of the poem is a puddle, Puddles of Water. And it's, the sun blocks my thoughts, but when it rains, they roam free. I'm a victim of circumstance around people that don't know me. Maybe if they went through what I did, things would be different. Mom was working three jobs, younger sis raising children. I thought people was tripping when they said things would get better, because they were wearing winter coats and I was wearing a sweater. Refusing things moms wanted to give, all I wanted was love. Trying hard to be a man, but misunderstood for a thug. Maybe I would change a few things if I could go back. Moms would be smiling instead of crying. Yeah, I like that. That's beautiful, if I can say that to a man. Yeah, it's thank you, it's thank beautiful you. poetry. How has writing like that changed you, Doug? Because it, it, I guess it gave me a platform to release a lot of things I had held thin. Because the only way I knew how to like get frustration and anger off was, I guess, through violence. And when I started writing, I guess it made me feel better, so I stuck with it. And you're now also a poet ambassador. What do you do as an ambassador? Well, I guess. Free mind out. My free minds family. We we have events called Right Night where we go into the community and we share the work for the guys in jail so they could get feedback. And I show up there and I guess I get people like my first hand experience on what free minds is and how the work is actually from guys that are incarcerated, not just things that we put together. Uh, uh, Ms. Liebert, what is it about writing, about being in a book like this and having an experience like Doug's that helps to rehabilitate? Well, for the youth that we see, it's um, real life examples like, oh, that's me. I'm not so alone. So like Doug said, it helps you process your own thoughts and then it connects you to other people. That's the most important key is that somebody reads about what we, like Doug's poem there and they go, I had that same feeling. I'm misunderstood as a thug. And then they connect and they go, I can overcome that. I can surpass that. And that's, it's really been surprising to us at Free Minds. We really did it as a way. We thought reading and writing, nice. You know, you need those literacy skills. So much more. It's like taking on this other life of being as a way, an avenue for people to gather around and, and as you say, ultimately reduce recidivism. That's our, our thing is to bring hope and possibilities. And that's what it does. And Marcus, is that what you think you've been able to do? Is that what you've been able to do for the young men under your tutelage? Well, that's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to, I, I tell all of the guys um, that they're the before and I'm the after. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I want to be able to try to help get them to a place um, where they feel comfortable in their own right, you know, do the things that they want to do. And don't feel like the prison sentence that you served is going to be the thing that's going to hold you back from being great. Mm. Doug, would you say any young man who's been through what you've been through, who's come from where you've come from, who's had the hard knocks that you've experienced, can any young man who's watching right now look at you and say, I can do that too? Absolutely. I believe all you need is just a little bit of willpower. It isn't hard. I don't think nobody like going to jail. And <laughs> through free minds, man, they'll help anybody. 
Mm -hmm. Like they ask us to bring friends, anybody that needs help. They want to help anybody that needs help. And I could tell anybody it's the best help you could get when you're in a time of need. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 you're the one who made the decision. Yeah, that's why I say you just need a little bit of willpower. That's it. That one thing is I'm at least try. Just try. Nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. I think, I think that's the thing, the attitude. Doug always had the attitude when he was 16. <laughs> he had the curiosity. But even the other guys, he'll say, I'll help you want to want to, to have it. That's the, the key. Well, you, you're doing wonderful work, Doug. Marcus, uh, congratulations on a successful life and career. And Tara Liebert, thank you. you're doing wonderful work with Free Minds Book Club and Writing Workshop. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing your stories literally <laughs> on viewpoint and that's our show thank you for being with us this morning stay with us for news for today and have a great sunday